everybody, Meriden Gaming here, and we're back in the Elsewhere realm. Uh, we've made a little bit of progress while off camera. We uh, went ahead and put in our, um, whatever you call this, let me get over here, uh, the, uh, what do you call it, bubble elevator, the auto bubble elevator that we did in our creative world last week. Um, I've actually created here in the our actual um single or not single player multiplayer world um i have not gotten to the point of getting the villagers over here for us to start doing the villager farm uh or villager powered uh farm like we have over you know or potato farm um but i went up top to start laying out some stuff let's see is this going to take me up oh it did oh oh can I get off the thing? Oh, there we go. Ha ha! I did it. That was strange. I have never done that before. Um, next question is, is it dark outside? It is dark outside. Uh, okay, hold on. Let me get out of this camera so I can actually figure out what I'm doing. Oh, nope, wrong button. Alright, so we gotta sleep real quick, and then we're going to go upstairs and take a look. Drop our bed. Alright. So, I noticed when we were away, uh, Nin actually donated a bunch of supplies for us. Uh, we've got a full chest of the red mushroom blocks, a fairly large chest of, or most of a chest of the brown, and then, well actually a full thing of the brown. Wait, oops, I heard him. He tried to sneak up on us. Uh, where's my sword? Ah, oh, this will work. Ooh! He gave us... Protection 2 and Blast protect Oh, Feather Falling Shoes. We <laughs> we definitely need those. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, Nin gave us also almost a full thing of the mushroom stems as well. Uh, and then a cookie and the mushroomer. So... Uh, we'll definitely have to take that because I think we're going to need it for sure when we're trying to let's see silk touch mending efficiency four and unbreaking three. Thank you, Nin. That is very helpful. That will replace our current one because uh, it does have the silk touch and the mending already on it. Uh, and then all this is going to be very helpful. Uh, we're, we'll have to go leave a note at Nin's base uh, whenever I can. Um, where if I can figure out where it's at. I don't exactly know where it's at right now. But whenever we do, we can go ahead and um, leave a note, leave a little, you know, present. Um, I'm not sure what Nin needs, but we'll we'll go check out uh, their base and figure out what they need and, you know, give them a few things back just to, you know, kind of pay it forward kind of deal. Uh, so, yeah, the next thing that was on the agenda was we need to figure out exactly how we're going to lay this out. Um, I've done a little bit of design work in our creative world, which we will jump to in a few minutes. And um, just on some of the different uh, styles or sizes of the uh, red and brown mushrooms, what I figure we're going to end up doing, I was trying to do some of the you know really big, like almost you could have your base inside the brown and red, but they don't really look all that great just because of how, you know, kind of basic they are. So what we're going to end up doing is we're going to do one giant um, crimson red mushroom, like from the nether here in the center. And then we're going to have the so a few small designs of the brown, the red, and then um, some standard size crimson and some standard size of the warped mushrooms as well. Uh, we'll just have to figure out our pathing, how we want that to run. I, I really want to do... Kind of like a little pond with some fish in it and maybe a little you know creek running through as well uh, that just falls off into the ravine that we're going to be doing as well so let's go ahead and hop over to our creative world and take a look at some of the designs for these small ones um, and then we'll be back over here all right we are back in our uh, elsewhere creative realm and here is what I've come up with for our different sizes of, which this brown one back here needs to be one stem higher. 
But this is what I'm going to go for for the different sizes of mushrooms that we're going to have. Basically, we're going to use the red and the brown as decoration for the most part. And then, because see, I tried to do the big ones, but the big ones just didn't look right to me. Um, if I can fly. There we go. Um, so, yeah, I tried to get the big ones to look right. But to me, it's just with the texture they have, it's very difficult to get them to look right. Um, I'm trying to make larger versions of them. I like the fact that with that one over there, with our, um, whatever you call this, the crimson one, we were able to do kind of like a funky stem. But for me, like the big ones just for the standard red and the standard brown just don't quite translate as well as the crimson nether ones do. Um, but anyway, so we're going to scrap the big brown and the big red, and we'll probably end up making the crimson one two to three times larger than it is, especially the bulb portion. Um, and we also have to make the stem a, quite a bit bigger, just so we have a singular, uh, whatever you call that, uh, pipe down the very center of the stem, especially if we're going to do the uh, kind of funky, gnarly stem, uh, just so we can have our bubble elevator in the bottom and have it bring us up to the top. Uh, I also want to do out one of the sides, we'll probably do like windows in it, but then also I want to do like a landing platform for our elytra. Because uh, I'd also try to toy around with also putting like our... Oh, cannot do this in reverse. I also tried to toy around with possibly putting our villager crop farm in here, but I would have to make it like half again larger and it was just so disproportionate that I really didn't like that idea. But yeah, so this is what we're going to go with. Um, we're probably going to cut back to our normal uh, portion of the realm. After I've put in, uh, I've gathered quite a bit of the crimson uh, whatever you call that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The crimson mycelium? Or the whatever you call it. Is it crimson mycelium? I don't remember. Whatever that stuff is. Actually, we can probably find out. Hold on. It's this stuff. Yeah, crimson oh, nylum. I keep calling it, I want to call it mycelium, but it's not. Because I, I keep thinking mycelium, like from the uh, mushroom biomes. Um, but I've got quite a bit of this. I haven't found the warped. We're going to have to find some of the warped uh, nylum. Nysil, ny how do you pronounce that again? Nylum. Warped nylum. So we can get the blue mushrooms as well. Uh, but yeah, but then also one other thing I forgot to no uh, mention. We're hiding our lights inside these. So we're going to space these around. Like this one, it's, it's not quite as bright. But if we do our set... Or wait, no. Time... Set uh, night. Oh, helps if I actually type something. Night. Yeah, as you can see, uh, like this one, it's not quite, it doesn't give up quite as much of a glow just because uh, these blocks right here and right here are fairly close to the thing. Actually, if I dig down, you can see it. See, it's only got a space around it. Um, so it doesn't project quite as far. Um, but for this one, it gives you a lot more glow just because there's not blocks right up against it. The uh, thing is, with this one, it's further up in. I could actually probably bring it to this one, I think. Uh, let me grab that. Just because it wouldn't be visible until you're fairly close. Pop that in place. Yeah, see, that would work. And it... it projects the light out a little bit further. And then for these, I did it just here and here for that one. And then for this one, we could do it in the stem again because it's further up. Um, and then this one, just because of, I was trying to mimic the larger uh, ones that we had in our farm. Um, although I need to replace that one. Uh, it's not going to have a light in it. It's just going to be like a little decoration basically and also if you didn't know um, one way to put stuff in place because uh, problem is like when you put a another uh, mushroom block next to one it gives you this texture 
If you don't want that to happen, say I've got one that high, and I don't want that, that texture right here, what you can actually do is use any other block. At least all the blocks I've tested with. Um, I've used dirt and grass and diorite. It doesn't have it doesn't create that weird texture. It's always whenever you have uh, another mushroom block next to it. And I think it works with oh and it's it's the same mushroom block. Interesting. I did not notice that. So we could put red, you could use red <laughs> to do it. But I think if you put Really? I could have sworn it did it with the stem earlier. Hmm. Well, what about two stems then? I could have sworn it, yeah. So it's the same mushroom block, so you can use any other block then. So that's very nice. Anyway, uh, give me a few minutes, well, more like a couple hours, and I'll get that, uh, start getting our path laid out at least. Now, I'm also going to have to get rid of the uh, next layer of our uh, area just because I want it to be that to be the ground level because that's the same level as water is at. But anyway, be back in a few minutes. Hey everybody, we are back in the Elsewhere Realm and this is taking a lot longer than I expected. And some other stuff came up today so I was not able to finish completely uh, bring this down one more level so that we could put in our uh, nice psyllium. Uh, but that also got me thinking as I was doing this, we've got a few different options. I definitely want to do the giant crimson mushroom here in the center, um, but we could either, you know, replace all this with nicelium, the red nicelium or crimson nicelium, whatever it's called, um, or we can have it to where it's kind of coming out from this area and corrupting the land and only bring it out a certain distance from the main uh, structure or the main crimson mushroom and then wherever we have the other crimson mushrooms or the uh warped mushrooms we have it you know their specific uh nicelum around them and then we have a normal um i really want to do a lighter green than this uh for using probably concrete powder for the grass that's around our normal mushrooms like our brown and our red uh, then the other thing I wanted to get y'all's opinion on, um, so, of course, so the first one is hashtag corrupted nicelum or hashtag all nicelum. Um, then the second thing was, since we're kind of doing this thing where it's coming from the nether, they don't have water in the nether. Instead of water rivers, they have lava rivers. So do y'all think we should do a lava river? And uh, coming through our thing, or like a, a stream, I guess is more the correct term, a, a lava stream, or should we just do the standard water stream? So hashtag lava stream or hashtag water stream, or actually, if y'all think we should do both, you know, where it's coming between two of the crimson mushrooms, we could do lava and have it kind of corrupted around the lava river, or we could also... Uh, you know, to kind of do both, where we have both uh, lava rivers and water rivers running throughout uh, the area. Because um, I really want to have it to where it does fall off the edge, because we are still going to dig down um, probably 30 blocks, which actually I will probably have to end up using a, whatever you call that, a TNT dropper thing. Uh, that way we can just kind of, it'll quickly dig it out. Um, Actually, we we'll may just use TNT ourselves and just, you know, dig it down and draw it. That way it's, it has a little bit less of a just straight down pattern. It's got more of a, you know, kind of warped in pattern for the um, fog area that we're going to be doing around the entire thing. But I want it to kind of have the water uh, from the rivers or the lava kind of flow off into the uh, the chasm that surrounds our base. So uh, let me know what y'all think on those two things, the uh, corrupted uh, around the red and blue mushrooms. Well, whatever, the crimson mushrooms, not the red, red. Um, and then also water or lava rivers. Anyway, this is Meriden Gaming. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit the little notification icon so you get to see all my videos we've got. Uh, three different Minecrafts. We've got this one here in the Elsewhere Realm, 
Infinity Craft, and our single-player survival world building Meiji Castle, which we are coming along nicely on that one finally, uh, now that I'm really starting to get those resources. We also have Elite Dangerous and Medieval Dynasty. If there's any other games y'all want to see, because I plan on starting to do live streaming, uh, which I was thinking we'll probably do modded Minecraft or maybe um, some sort of FPS or you know some, some sort of action game, maybe racing if y'all are looking for that. So just let me know what type of games y'all want to see on the live streams, uh, which those will also appear on YouTube under a new, uh, whatever you call it, playlist of you know actual live streams. But that way y'all can interact with me directly. Um, and we can, if there's any specific games y'all want to see, we can take a look at those. Anyway, uh, this is Married in Gaming, and I will see you in the Mushroom King. Well, I guess it's not a Mushroom Kingdom yet. In the soon-to-be Mushroom Kingdom. <laughs> see y'all later.